Equestrian Statue from Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia at wikipedia.org. An equestrian statue is a statue of a rider mounted on a horse, from the Latin equus, meaning knight, deriving from equus, meaning horse. A statue of a riderless horse is strictly an equine statue. A full-sized equestrian statue is a difficult and expensive object for any culture to produce, and figures have typically been portraits of rulers or, more recently, military commanders. History Ancient Greece Equestrian statuary in the West goes back at least as far as archaic Greece. Found on the Athenian Acropolis, the 6th century BC statue known as the Rampant Rider depicts a koros mounted on horseback. Ancient Middle and Far East A number of ancient Egyptian, Assyrian, and Persian reliefs show mounted figures, usually rulers, though no freestanding statues are known. The Chinese terracotta army has no mounted riders, though cavalrymen stand beside their mounts, but smaller Tang Dynasty pottery tomb Ka figures often include them at a relatively small scale. No Chinese portrait equestrian statues were made until modern times. Statues of rulers are not part of traditional Chinese art, and indeed, even painted portraits were only shown to high officials on special occasions until the 11th century. Ancient Rome Such statues frequently commemorated military leaders, and those statesmen who wished to symbolically emphasize the active leadership role undertaken since Roman times by the equestrian class, the equites, plural of equus, or knights. There were numerous bronze equestrian portraits, particularly of the emperors, in ancient Rome, but they did not survive because they were melted down for reuse of the alloy as coin, church bells, or other smaller projects, such as new sculptures for Christian churches. The standing colossus of Barletta lost parts of his legs and arms to Dominican bells in 1309. Almost the only sole surviving Roman equestrian bronze, the equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius in Rome, owes its preservation on the Campidoglio to the popular misidentification of Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor, with Constantine the Great, the Christian emperor. The Regisole, Sun King, was a bronze classical or late antique equestrian monument of a ruler, highly influential during the Italian Renaissance, but destroyed in 1796 in the wake of the French Revolution. It was originally erected at Ravenna, but removed to Pavia in the Middle Ages, where it stood on a column before the cathedral. A fragment of an equestrian portrait sculpture of Augustus has also survived. Medieval Europe Equestrian statues were not very frequent in the Middle Ages. Nevertheless, there are some examples, like the Bamberg Horseman, der Bamberger Reiter, located in Bamberg Cathedral. Another example is the Magdeburg Reiter, in the city of Magdeburg, that depicts Emperor Otto I. There are a few roughly half-sized statues of St. George and the Dragon, including the famous ones in Prague and Stockholm. The Scaliger tombs in Verona include Gothic statues at less than life size. A well-known small bronze in Paris may be a contemporary portrait of Charlemagne, although its date and subject are uncertain. Renaissance After the Romans, no surviving monumental equestrian bronze was cast in Europe until 1415 to 1450, when Donatello created the heroic bronze equestrian statue of Gadamelita the Condottiere erected in Padua. In 15th century Italy, this became a form to memorialize successful mercenary generals, as evidenced by the painted equestrian funerary monuments to Sir John Hawkwood and Niccolò da Tolentino in Florence Cathedral, and the statue of Bartolomeo Colleone, 1478-1488, cast by Verrocchio in Venice. Leonardo da Vinci had planned a colossal equestrian monument to the Milanese ruler Francesco Sforza, but was only able to create a clay model. The bronze was reallocated for military use in the First Italian War. Similar sculptures have survived in small scale. The Wax Horse and Rider, circa 1506 to 1508, is a fragmentary model for an equestrian statue of Charles d'Amboise. The Rearing Horse and Mounted Warrior in bronze was also attributed to Leonardo. Titian's equestrian portrait of Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor of 1548, applied the form again to a ruler. The equestrian statue of Cosimo I de' Medici, 1598, by Giambologna in the center of Florence, was a life-size representation of the Grand Duke, erected by his son Ferdinand I. Ferdinand himself would be memorialized in 1608 with an equestrian statue in Piazza della Annunziata, was completed by Giambologna's assistant Pietro Tacca. Taka's studio would produce such models for the rulers in France and Spain. His last public commission was the colossal equestrian bronze of Philip IV, begun in 1634 and shipped to Madrid in 1640. 
in Taka's sculpture, atop a fountain composition that forms the centerpiece of the facade of the royal palace, the horse rears, and the entire weight of the sculpture balances on the two rear legs, and, discreetly, its tail, a novel feat for a statue of this size. Absolutism During the age of absolutism, especially in France, equestrian statues were popular with rulers. Louis XIV was typical in having one outside his palace of Versailles, and the over-life-size statue in the Place des Victoires in Paris by François Girardon, 1699, is supposed to be the first large modern equestrian statue to be cast in a single piece. It was destroyed in the French Revolution, though there is a small version in the Louvre. The near-life-size equestrian statue of Charles I of England by Hubert Le Sœur of 1633 at Charing Cross in London is the earliest large English example, which was followed by many. The equestrian statue of King José I of Portugal in the Praça de Cormercio was designed by Joaquim Mochado de Castro after the 1755 Lisbon earthquake and is a pinnacle of absolutist age statues in Europe. The bronze horseman, Miedni Sadnik, literally the copper horseman, is an iconic equestrian statue on a huge base of Peter the Great of 1782 by Etienne-Maurice Falconet in St. Petersburg, Russia. The use of French artists for both examples demonstrates the slow spread of the skills necessary for creating large works, but by the 19th century most large Western countries could produce them without the need to import skills, and most statues of earlier figures are actually from the 19th or early 20th centuries. United States In the colonial era, an equestrian statue of George III by English sculptor Joseph Wilton stood on Bowling Green in New York City. The 4,000-pound gilded lead statue was erected in 1770, but on July 9, 1776, New Yorkers toppled the structure and cut it into pieces. Some fragments survived, and in 2016, the statue was recreated for a museum. In the United States, the first three full-scale equestrian sculptures were Clark Mills' Andrew Jackson, 1852, in Washington, D.C., Henry Kirk Brown's George Washington, 1856, in New York City, and Thomas Crawford's George Washington in Richmond, Virginia, 1858. Mills was the first American sculptor to overcome the challenge of casting a rider on a rearing horse. The resulting sculpture of Jackson was so popular he repeated it for New Orleans, Nashville, and Jacksonville. Cyrus Edwin Dahlin made a specialty of equestrian sculptures of American Indians. His Appeal to the Great Spirit stands before the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. The Robert Gould Shaw Memorial in Boston is a well-known relief including an equestrian portrait. 20th Century as the 20th century progressed, the popularity of the equestrian monument declined sharply as monarchies fell and the military use of horses virtually vanished. The statue of Queen Elizabeth II riding Burmese in Canada and statues of Rani Lakshmibai in Gwalior and Jhansi, India are some of the rare portrait statues with female riders, although Joan of Arc has been portrayed a number of times. In America, the late 1970s and early 1980s witnessed something of a revival in equestrian monuments, largely in the southwestern United States. There, art centers such as Loveland, Colorado, Shadoni Foundry in New Mexico, and various studios in Texas once again began producing equestrian sculpture. These revival works fall into two general categories, the memorialization of a particular individual or the portrayal of general figures, notably the American cowboy or Native Americans. Such monuments can be found throughout the American Southwest. Tallest and Largest Equestrian Statue the monument to General José Gervasio Artigas in Minas, Uruguay, 18 meters tall, 9 meters long, 150,000 kilograms, was the world's largest equestrian statue until 2009. The current largest is the 40 meters tall Genghis Khan equestrian statue at Sonjin Baldog, 54 kilometers, from Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, the legendary location where Genghis Khan found the Golden Whip. The world's largest equestrian sculpture when completed will be the Crazy Horse Memorial in South Dakota, USA, at a planned 641 feet, 195 meters wide, and 563 feet, 172 meters high, even though only the upper torso and head of the rider and front half of the horse will be depicted. Also on a huge scale, the carvings at Stone Mountain in Georgia, USA, are equestrian sculpture rather than true statues, the largest bas-relief in the world. The world's largest equestrian bronze statues are Juan de Oñate statue in El Paso, Texas, 2006, statue in Altare della Patria in Rome, 1911, and statue of Jana Zizka in Prague, 1950. Hoof Position Symbolism In the United States and the United Kingdom, an urban legend states that if the horse is rearing both front legs in the air, the rider died from battle. One front leg up means the rider was wounded in battle, and if all four hooves are on the ground, the rider died outside battle. 
For example, Richard the Lionheart is memorialized, mounted passant outside the Palace of Westminster by Carlo Marochetti. The former died eleven days after his wound, sustained in siege, turned septic. In the United States, the rule is especially held to apply to equestrian statues commemorating the American Civil War and the Battle of Gettysburg, but there are at least nine instances where the rule does not hold for Gettysburg equestrian statues. One such statue was erected in 1998 in Gettysburg National Military Park and is of James Longstreet, who is featured on his horse with one foot raised, even though Longstreet was not wounded in that battle. However, he was seriously wounded in the wilderness battle the following year. This is not a traditional statue, as it does not place him on a pedestal. One writer claims that any correlation between the positioning of hooves in a statue and the manner in which a Gettysburg soldier died is a coincidence. There is no proper evidence that these hoof positions are right, but people believe it to be. It is true in some instances, but false too in others. Song Equestrian Statue is the title of a 1967 song by the Bonzo Dog Duda Band in which a town square is enlivened by the presence of an equestrian statue of a former dignitary. See also List of Equestrian Statues. This audio was recorded on July 21, 2019.